Hey, hope you're having a good Tuesday. Thanks for joining for today's Five for Five. We're going to take a quick look at 1 Kings 18 and 19. Here we see two mountaintop experiences. And for that, I wanted to come in here to the worship center and give you kind of a, the bird's eye view of what it looks like in this room. Maybe this has been a room for you uh, where you've had some mountaintop experiences. Maybe there's been other churches and other places where you've been with the Lord where you have seen him work and speak to you in amazing ways. In 1 Kings chapter 18, we see a mountaintop experience for Elijah when he goes before King Ahab, calls him to task for the idolatry and the paganism that he had led the people in. He calls out the prophets of Baal, and he challenges the 450 prophets of Baal to a showdown. He says, you build your altar, and I'll build mine, and we'll see which God can bring fire down from heaven. And, and the prophets of Baal cry out day, uh, the whole day, and they can't see a single flame come down. And, and, and he finally says, all right, that's enough, that's enough, you've had your time. And he comes to the altar and rebuilds it before the Lord. He places the offering there. He even puts extra offering of water there and, and, and challenges the, the prophets of Baal to something that they couldn't even have done themselves. And then with a simple prayer, he calls out to the Lord to show his power in an amazing way. And the Lord brings fire down from heaven, consuming the burnt offering, consuming the whole bull, as, long, as well as the water all around. And all of the people cry out, the Lord, he is God. Yahweh, the Lord, he is God. And, and they're amazed at the great power that they have seen. Well, we see this great display of God's power in Mount Carmel and how this amazing mountaintop experience happens. But in the very next chapter, we turn the page and we see that Elijah is on the run. Now he's afraid for his life. He's heard that Jezebel, the wife of Ahab, is after him. We've heard that, that he's heard that, that she's going to take revenge on him for, for killing the false prophets of Baal and taking out the vengeance of the Lord on them. And he runs for his life all the way over 250 miles away, 40 days and 40 nights, he travels to Mount Horeb, the mountain of the Lord. And as he gets there, he goes and hides himself in a cave. We see two completely different mountaintop experiences from a place of victory to now Elijah is in a place where he feels apparent defeat. And it's in that cave that the Lord comes to him. And the first question that the Lord brings is very interesting as Elijah's placed himself in this cave. He says, what are you doing here, Elijah? I want to encourage you today, you know, maybe your mountaintop experience feels like it needs to come only off of a great retreat or a great camp or a conference that you get to or a great opportunity for worship. But it may be that God's calling you to a mountaintop experience because you found yourself kind of stuck in a cave today. And maybe God's calling out to you to say, what are you doing here? You know, you can look back at life. You can see victories. You can see the Lord working in amazing ways if you followed after him. But maybe you look back at your life and you see defeats too. You see ways that you've messed it up or ways that the world's been tough around you. And God's calling out to you to say, what are you doing here? Wherever you find yourself, what is it that you're doing within the work that I've called you to do? Elijah was in a cave hiding out. And in many ways, if you read the scripture, you see that he put himself there. So often before he had listened to the voice of God, but now he had placed himself in a cave far from the action of what God was doing. And he says this question to him and Elijah calls back and he, he gives his reasons, all the things that have bogged him down, all the reasons why he is scared. And, and it's almost as if God doesn't listen to everything that he says. Instead, he says, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. We don't see Elijah immediately going out. Instead, what we see is that the Lord passes by and it says a great and strong wind tore through the mountain. And next, but it, but it says that God wasn't really in that wind. And then an earthquake comes to the mountain, but God wasn't in the earthquake. And, and, and then it says that after the earthquake, there was a fire, and, but the Lord was not in the fire. And then it says that last, after the fire, there was the sound of a low whisper. And it's at this point that Elijah knows that he's now in the presence of God. It says, when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak, he went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him, and he said, What are you doing here, Elijah? I encourage you today to not only look for the amazing, powerful moments with the Lord, but stop and be still before him to hear the quiet whisper of his voice as you draw in close to him to listen to what he has to say for you. And in those moments when we stop and we quit always looking for just the amazing power, but we also want to draw close to the Lord and Savior who loves us so much, it's in those moments that we can hear him, and he's going to speak into our lives. For Elijah, he had a plan. He had a purpose that Elijah knew nothing of. Elijah had all of this figured out, he thought, but there was so much unknown that was still ahead. The same's true for us. God's not done with us yet. That's why we're still here. We stop and we listen. He's got words he wants to speak to us. Go back to 1 Kings 18 and 19 and look and see 
what God would have to say to you today.